Hi, in this video we're going to be looking at a solution to roll mesh objects in Blender using geometry nodes. In order to keep this setup fairly simple we're going to take a slightly naive approach and we're going to assume that the ground plane is going to be completely flat and at zero on the z-axis. Um, this will allow us to keep the node tree from getting too complicated and we might potentially build on this in a future video where we address the concept of rolling objects along some uneven terrain. I'm using Blender 4.0 for this but any build that includes the simulation nodes should work fine. So let's jump into a geometry nodes tab and create a new node graph on this object. Let's give it a name. And roll mesh. And the first thing we want to do is drop down a simulation zone because we're going to want to evaluate the state of this object on each frame. Let's get that in here and just pipe our geometry through there. So one of the first things we're going to want to do is store the position, the original position of each point on this mesh relative to its origin. So if we drop down a store named attribute, it's going to be of type vector on the point domain. The value will be the position and we'll just give it a name. We're also going to want a control object in the scene that we can move around and have the mesh follow along. So I'm just going to add an empty, any shape will do. Make it a little bit bigger so we can see it outside the cube. And rename this to control and drag it into our geometry nodes graph. Okay, so to start with, let's just get this mesh following the location of the control in the scene. So we're going to want a set position node in here. And let's just set the position of the points to the location. So we also need to add our pause attribute. Grab a named attribute node, target the pause attribute that we stored, and we just want to add these two values together. Play the timeline and move this control object around. We should see that the cube's following along. What we need to do is figure out how far this control has moved in between frames and in what direction. So if we look from the top view, we're going to take its current location and the location of the previous frame, subtract one from the other, and that will give us a vector in the direction that the cube has moved. And in order to do that, we're going to need to store the previous location in our simulation zone so that we can use it on the next cycle. The way to do that is to simply push this to the output of the simulation zone that will open up a new port on the input here, which we'll be able to use in our graph. If we take the control object's current location and subtract its previous location from it, this will now give us a vector that describes how far the cube has moved and in what direction. Now we need to determine an axis around which to rotate our cube and the way we're going to do that is using a cross product operation. So first we're going to normalize this vector which just means whatever length this ends up being normalize function will scale that to be a length of one unit. We're then going to push this into a cross product and we're going to cross this vector against 0, 0, 001 the z axis. And what this will give us is a vector which is perpendicular to both the direction the control has moved and the world up. So to do the actual rolling we're going to use a vector rotate node. This cross product output is going to be the axis around which we're going to rotate. The vector that we want to rotate is this pause attribute. The angle is going to be based on how far the cube has traveled. So for now we're going to assume that the radius of our cube is one unit. We will need to adjust this radius later to account for the irregularity of the shape. But for now let's just get this working at, at a simple level. So what we need to do is take the length of this vector. This is the amount the cube has moved and because Blender under the hood is dealing with radians we can plug this length straight into the angle of our rotate. So with our add node here we no longer want to add the raw pause, we want to add it after it's been rotated. So we can un unhook that connection and instead connect our rotated version. Now before this will actually work we need to update the pause attribute after we've set the position. So at the end here we're going to duplicate this store named attribute, bring it across and update it with our newly rotated vector. Bring this one across. So now if we hit play, grab our control object, we are getting some rotation. Now this looks backwards and in fact it is backwards. And the reason for that is very simple to fix. 
it matters which order this operation happens in for the cross product. So we could either swap the order of these inputs around or we can just flip the axis that we're crossing with. So if we turn this into the, the negative Z axis, this should now give us what we're after. And you can see that that is in fact now rolling nicely. Let's now deal with moving the cube up so that as it rolls, it sits on the ground plane. And what we're going to want to do is set the position again using an offset to bring it up to the right level. So after our initial set position, we're going to drag a bounding box node. And this will output for us the minimum dimensions of this object in world space. So if we take this minimum value and run it through a multiply, what we want to do is ignore the X and Y components because we only want to move it up on the Z axis. Because our minimum is projecting down in the scene, we want to flip the Z component so that we get an offset in the positive Z direction. If we now pipe this vector into our offset of our second set position, the cube should pop up and we should see that if we grab our control object now, hit play and move it around, we are getting a behavior that's roughly what we're looking for. What you will notice is that the corners are sliding a little bit as we move. Now, so far, we've been assuming that the radius is just one unit. We've just been plugging the length of the vector that the control has moved straight into the angle of rotation. But we're gonna to want to manipulate this value here before we pipe it into the rotation. And we're actually gonna make use of this bounding box offset that we calculated a moment ago. What we want to do is store this, this vector as an output to our simulation zone, which is going to make it available on the next cycle as an input that we can use. Let's give it a slightly more meaningful name than vector. Hit N, bring up the, the node panel. we we'll change this to maybe height. So we can use this height vector now. We're going to separate it into its component axes, and we're only interested in the Z. We're going to divide the length of our controls movement vector by our height component, the Z component of our height vector. And we're gonna use this value now instead of this raw length value as our angle. So the further this object has had to be moved up, the larger its computed radius is gonna be. And the larger the radius, the less this cube's gonna to need to rotate in order to stay locked onto the ground plane. Let's give it a test. And now we should see those corners are staying nicely fixed to the floor as we move our control object around. So really we're done, we're done with this now. There's a few little bits we can add. One thing that's quite nice is if we add a transform geometry node right back here at the start of our graph and expose this rotation as an input, it means that we can specify an initial orientation for our object. So if we're not keen on how the if we're not keen on how the simulation is running, we can alter these initial values, which will give us a, a different starting point for the orientation of our object. And it can give you a more interesting rolling behavior. The other thing we might want to do is if the ground plane is not at zero, we might want to, you know, might want to be rolling objects on a, on a plane that's say at 10 units up in the Z axis. So all you would need to do in that case is add in another component to this offset here. So let's take a combine X, Y, Z. Let's add these two vectors and use this instead for our offset. We can expose this Z value so that you now have access to this on the, on the modifier. Let's give that a slightly more meaningful name. And this one as well. So let's see if it works with a different shaped object. If we go into edit mode on the cube, let's delete those faces. Let's add a torus. There we go, it's already moved up. It looks like it's sitting nicely on the ground plane. So let's grab our control object and move that around. As you can see, this is behaving as we expect. Let's do one more. So edit mode. Delete faces and add a monkey. Again, grab the control, hit play. And there's our Suzanne rolling around, having a great time.
Okay, so pretty simple setup. As I say, we may build on this in the future to generalize the rolling behavior for uneven terrains. And we might even look at some squishy rolling behavior at some point as well. But for now, I hope you found something useful in this and thanks for watching.